What is going on, people? It's Elijah from my charge back. Before we get started, please don't forget to click a like and subscribe. And if you've been the victim of a scam, please click on the link in the description below. A quick disclaimer. The realities of fighting scams are not pretty, and some of the truths and realities that have to be internalized can be pretty harsh. So this is not for the thin skin. This is for people who want to fight back. Now, let's get on with our 22nd crypto scam Q&A. Now, I want to preface this by saying that the actual remedy to all three of the following questions is not simple, but it is a crypto recovery. So, what are the three steps we are talking about? One, blockchain forensics, working through the blockchain from the depositor's wallet all the way through to the end wallet where it was either cashed out or is waiting and in between showing all of the money laundering tricks that they tried to do where they tried to split it up, convert it in and out of different cryptocurrencies, throw it through money mixtures, and so many more tricks that clearly show money laundering is going on. It's very important. It's not just the end exchange, it's how it got there. The second stage, obtaining your KYC. The blockchain forensics is used by law enforcement as evidence to subpoena the final exchange for the KYC information. That's know your customer. That is their name, their email, their ID, their phone number, and all this other information. That's who your scammer is or the money launderer that they are using, and that is who is obligated to give you your money back. And that brings us to number three, the recovery mechanism itself. This depends largely on the circumstances of the KYC, it could be that it's as simple as the exchange saying, oh, look, you gave them a Bitcoin. They have a Bitcoin. I'll give you a Bitcoin back. It could be a negotiated settlement with them. It could be a criminal case. It could be a civil case. It could be a number of things. And it depends on the location and what is going on with the KYC. In general, there is no one size fits all. So remember those three things as we talk through this, because what I really want to talk through as I go through these questions is the dynamics of the scam itself and its consequences. So question number one. Hi, Elijah. I need your help. A friend was trading on this platform and showed me over a number of weeks how well his account was growing. He introduced me to a woman called Amanda Hug and Kiss at this brokerage, and I agreed to invest with her. He grew my account, and I didn't realize anything was wrong until I asked to withdraw some money. It was to be sent to my bank. Then she passed me to Dick Johnson, and he bullied me into paying 700 euros into a Coinbase account to recover the 10,000 that I had asked for. But he wants more money and I refuse to send any more money and ask him to honor his promise to give me the money back. I don't think he will. So I wonder if this is a scam. And if so, how can I recover my initial investment? I have also to tried to withdraw my funds on the site. I sent a request and it shows a message saying the request is accepted, but nothing happens. What do I do here? Well, you already know the answer because I outlined the answer prior to the question. What's more important here is how this person got here and the social engineering behind it. They met somebody online. Now, this could be a pig butchering scam. This could be a more regular romance scam. But either way, they're showing gains that they made on that platform, which means they're using fake charts. And then they drove them there, and yes, they picked very cheeky, funny names. And you can get away with that if you're a scammer. At least to the untrained ear. But more to the point, you see the fake gains, and yes, we got the what? It's not a tax that he talks about, but it's definitely... The nonsensical thing that you got to pay and they bullied you into it because you as a scam victim might be in a vulnerable emotional position because that's how most people end up getting scammed. And so you can see that this person actually caught on pretty well. Uh, a lot of people would have gone through a lot more stages of paying made up fees and taxes. So get to that blockchain forensics and get the process going. Question number two. Hi, Elijah. My life is shattered and I need your help. Ew. Over the last nine months, I lost in total a sum of 400000 foolishly investing with online scammers who claim that if I invested a certain sum of money, 
Then I would receive within a week a larger sum of money. I lost my entire inheritance executing this behavior to the extent that it has ruined my family and we are now getting divorced after 40 years of marriage. My oldest son is so disgusted with me that he refuses to speak with me. The recovery of these funds is hugely important to me as it will impact my standard of living in future years to come. I have the Binance record of all the Bitcoin that left my computer during this time. If these funds could be recovered, it would be life-changing for me. What do I do here? So what you do, again, is the prescribed stages, blockchain forensics, KYC identification, and the recovery mechanism. Now, what's more important here is first, here's the actual dynamic of the scam. Okay, there are a lot of scams where they say you will get X amount back after a certain time period. In this case, it was a week. All right, again, not uncommon. Ridiculous returns, way too quick. For those who are not seasoned investors, this might get you. Happens a lot. But the consequences are bigger. You see, there are probably a lot of you that are hearing that this ended in a divorce and that an adult child will not speak to them. This is incredibly common. It is too common because what people lose when they lose a lot of money to scams is not just money. They literally lose their lives. Uh, there are those that have said that it's even a form of psychological violence and that people get so attached to money as the concept that propels it that they think that by getting all of this money back, everything will be magically healed. And while that can help, I don't know if that will totally heal it. But there is a process to fight back for that money. And then what happens from there on the family end? Uh, that one's a little beyond us. That one is up to you. But the consequences of scammers behavior goes well beyond just taking people's money, because as you can see, it destroys people's lives. So we're going to move on to the next question, and I hope it's not nearly as painful. Eh. Question number three. Hi, Elijah. I have gotten myself into quite a pickle here. This is a crypto-related scam where someone contacted me as a professional on LinkedIn who worked for Coinbase and discussed general life and eventually introduced cryptocurrency trading to me. This took place over a long period from December of last year, showing me the site and how she invested and got millions. Ah, there it is. Romance scam, or at least the friend zone romance scam. She showed me the trade platform with the millions in there. She was able to show the process and it looked legitimate. She then encouraged me to get loans from the bank to add to these sites she wanted me to trade on and said she will add an amount to it if I do. Investing together is so pretty. So I got a $60,000 loan while requesting another $190,000 for a second platform. Wow. Eventually, the funds got to the first site. And the very next day during the trade, the funds were wiped out and the site closed. The second site is still up and they are asking for money to get an additional loan to cover the tax for the $950,000 that I have traded so that they can send it to me. However, I've realized that it's a scheme to get more funds from me. It's all in Ethereum. What do I do here? All right. So again, our solution is blockchain forensics, KYC identification, and recovery mechanism. Now, more to the point, what I want to bring to this here is that there is a few components that are very common to a lot of scams here. All right, if we go to a recent video I did on romance scams, you will see that LinkedIn is big. All right, now the way one would approach somebody as a fellow professional would not be so chitty chatty. It would be more, hey, it's great to connect with you, da, 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 and that's all field talk, not general subjects, and that's something that you as a scam victim should be looking out for. Uh, beyond that, they pose as somebody who is legitimate. They pose as somebody on Coinbase. Now, usually when this stuff goes on on LinkedIn, it's usually somebody from a similar industry. Uh, in that case, it probably was not because there's no way somebody who was in crypto would have looked at this and said, this is legit. But more diabolically, they got you to take loans. Again, 
This happens incredibly often. I really, this is one of the things that scammers do that actually really disgust me amongst the many things that disgust me about scams. This one is one of the things that disgusts me more. There, let me phrase it better. Okay. So when we talk to people and, you know, we say, wow, that's a lot of money. That must be your entire life savings. And then they say, oh, no, I got loans. In this case, this person got $250,000 worth of loans. And by the way, banks do not think that you are off the hook for just giving people money to lose to scams and investment scams. All right. Banks bear some liability for this. You see, not only did this person lose all this money, but now they are indebted to a bank. All right, it's not money that they had, it's money that they owe to somebody else. It is a double whammy. Now, of course, one site went down, all right? That looks to me like a very, very quick rug pull. And the second one, they're going through the motions to try and milk them and to try and get more loans. This is diabolical. Now, the good news here is that you're not going to give them anymore because you know it's a scam. So, what you need to do is get started on that blockchain forensics. If it's all in Ethereum, this is the Google, the mega highway of crypto. There is no hiding in there. In fact, Vitalik Viturin, you know, the guy who's in charge of Ethereum, thinks it's just a little too open and he would like to put in place all sorts of other privacy measures that I don't entirely agree with as they would do nothing but aid scammers. So for the moment, Unless Vitalik Vitorin actually makes some of these idiotic steps that he wants to take a reality, and I don't think he will, uh, there's no hiding. You're going to ID this guy pretty darn quick, and you're going to get at him. So, I'm going to leave it there today, and I really hope that for those of you watching, you got a sense for all of the ways that social engineering goes into these scams and that the consequences go beyond just losing money. Now, if you've been the victim of a scam, we've repeated the recourse enough. Take the next step and get started by clicking the link in the description below. And if you just like the video because you like me or you know you like the video, click like and subscribe. I've been Elijah. We'll see you next time.